Hey guys, a warm welcome from Sunny Malaysia. So while we've had great database features in Notion, we kind of lacked one or more of the visual elements, flowcharts and charts till now. This has been one of my biggest pet peeves. So during the holiday season, Notion wished us Merry Christmas in their own way with multiple updates, including one for creating flowcharts. So if you'd like to know how to use flowcharts to the optimum, stick around for the ride. Because at the end, I will also share with you a free template that you can pick up from my website. I found flowcharts providing a bigger picture, especially when it relates to processes or with scripts. And who can actually deny that a picture says a million words? So if you're collating information for yourself or for your team, you will realize that rather than having long winded paragraphs, a flowchart is much easier to comprehend. So by using flowchart shapes, colors and lines, I could provide a much richer dimension to the flowchart itself. So Notion introduced flowcharts through its code block feature. So the way it works is by opening up the code block and then choosing mermaid as the option. The reason I find this method really important is that I can natively plot the flowchart right inside of Notion. So Mermaid's syntax is based out of JavaScript and that's used for charting and diagramming. So if you know Markdown, you shouldn't have a problem. For programmers, writing a Markdown is quite natural, but for others, it's not so. The syntaxes are quite simple to learn, but Putting them together as one lot requires some effort. But then there is a simpler way. So I would rather focus on the job at hand than having to get my brain to work around how to make the code and to create a flowchart. The workaround for this that I designed was a workflow and a database that I created right inside of Notion. This allows you to make choices rather than having to write the code the code is generated automatically. So as I was developing my own template, I got inspired by William Nutt's video where he showcased a similar template. So what I did was to use that as a baseline and then I added many more elements to it to create my own version. So I added more shapes like the rhombus, parallelograms and circles. So for now, I also added an additional color, orange. And then again, I added two line types, one dashed and a thick line. To test the solution, I used David Allen's GTD workflow. I quite like the three-step process that William Nutt introduced. So Notion is capable of delivering code at the row level, which is a single step. And then that could become the first step. So with the help of relations and rollup, you could just move the whole code onto another database and that would be the aggregated code. So this is where when you're doing the consolidation, I can add what kind of flowchart I really require, top to bottom or left to right. So this would be the second step. So in the third step, you have a code block. All you need to do is to select all the lines of the code and paste them into the code block and that generates the flowchart. That's Step number three, what you'll realize is that the code block itself can be visualized as plain code or as a mix between the plain code and the flowchart or just the preview of the flowchart, giving us three options. Since you'll be using this database table again and again, you can just filter this to this flowchart alone and you will receive only these flowchart steps. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be using David Allen's GTD system and the workflow that's assigned to it. If you take a glimpse of David Allen's GTD system, you will realize that it starts with stuff. That's where all the information that's unprocessed and scattered in various places, including your head, documents and paper, computer and somewhere else, all comes in into the same place. Now what you're going to do is to move all of that unorganized information, stuff, into an inbox. So you're going to ask yourself some questions regarding its organization 
And then the information then goes into different buckets to be executed immediately or at a certain point in time. So there's this neat little reference card that allows you to visualize the whole GTD workflow on one page. And that's what we are attempting to recreate. So I created the workflow to consist of three steps, three diagnostics to problem shoot and an engine room view. So after you filter the flowchart name, you start adding the steps and the sub-steps into the steps. The steps and the sub-steps number allow you to keep the hierarchy really neat. Because you've set a filter to a certain type of flowchart, the flowchart relation is auto-populated. The created time is auto-populated as well. This is pretty useful when you want to reconcile a particular record or a flowchart. So I've added some of the most commonly used shapes, which includes a rhombus, a rectangle, a circle, so there are five main colors to choose from at this moment and you can add more colors as you wish very quickly. The main step in the process is to fill up the database and this is going to be an elaborate one. So first, you define the parent step. The child step is automatically populated. So in case you want to link two parent steps, all you need to do is to cross-reference them in parent 2 or parent 3. So in the parent line text column, you define the narration that you want to insert between the arrows. You can also define the line length from default to thick to dotted. There is something missing and that is that you need to define what kind of flowchart you want, whether you want a left to right or a top to bottom. And that's also defined in this database. So using all the information and the parameters that you have set, the Notion database automatically calculates the code and it tells you the kind of color that you've been using, the kind of line that you require and the kind of shape that needs to go in. So something goes wrong, what do you do? I've set up three views for each of the parents where you can go back and relook at the parameters that you've set and whether it's reflecting correctly in the code by each parent, by each step. Once you've diagnosed the issue and you've fixed it, then your code should work seamlessly in case you run into trouble. The whole view is also available in the engine room where everything is shown by step as individual rows inside of the main database. So the final step is to copy the code and just paste it in the code block. So you might ask me, what's missing? So if you really look at it, this is a markdown version of a flowchart. And there are much more fancier solutions available out there where you don't have to write code and the GUI gets regenerated. Sometimes it might be useful just to take the PDF and embed it inside of Notion. The image is constructed out of code rather than of modern UI. There aren't any swim lanes, which is now a de facto flowchart standard. Again, the arrows are quite archaic. They go all over the place and you can't have straight lines when you so desire. All in all, I just don't feel it has the most aesthetic feel to it. So while this is a great solution, you should have a look at other workflow solutions and see which one works for you. So in the description below, I'm going to be sharing the way you can take a copy of this template for free. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.